Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men have asked me for the right words to say to be more attractive, desirable, and more of a leader. And I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because at the root of a connected and affectionate relationship and being more effective and inspiring at work is your ability to influence others. But most often influence is not gained or lost with words. It's from what I call the invisible factors. So I created a quick guide for you called three ways men lose influence at work and with women. So you can understand how these invisible factors work and what has women and colleagues both more inspired to say yes. I think you're also going to be surprised to find out the moment when your influence actually begins. So grab the guide for free at shanajamescoaching.com slash three ways. That's shanajamescoaching.com slash the number three and the word ways, W-A-Y-S. Or you can text ALIVE to 44144. That's the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144. I hope you enjoy the guide and this episode. All right. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm excited to be here today to talk about life as a game, whether life actually is a game, whether we can have a regret-free life, and how to play for real. So I'm here today with David Wood. David, welcome. Hello, Shana. So good to have you here. Same. I... You and I have never done a, an interview, I think. No, we've known no. each other for many, many years, and I yeah. respect you and what you're up to. And for those of you who don't know you, let me give you a quick bio, and then we can dive in. So David says, this is your bio, when you're 10,000 feet above the Himalayas hanging from a piece of cloth, you see life differently. And he holds the viewpoint that life is the best game there is and really wants to ask you, are you playing for real? David coaches high-performing entrepreneurs, executives, and leaders to play the best game they possibly can, living a regret-free life. How do they do this? By setting life-changing goals, taking laser-focused action, and increasing their levels of truth, daring, and caring in both life and work. A former consulting actuary to Fortune 100 companies, including Sony Music, Procter & Gamble, and Exxon, David left his cushy Park Avenue job 20 years ago to explore both the outer world and his inner world. And along the way, he's coached thousands of hours in a dozen countries around the globe and is the author of Get Paid for Who You Are with a foreword by Jack Canfield. So thank you again for being here. I just thought, I just wondered, how does it feel to have left your job 20 years ago? How does it feel now? Yeah, I mean, it's been a long time. I, I patted, patted myself on the back last week, I think, when I realized that, like, it's a hustle being an entrepreneur yeah. and being a solopreneur. It's, a, it's kind of a grind a lot of the time. Yeah. And uh, someone said to, to me and a bunch of men, he said, it's hard. And this was a successful guy. This, this was John Gray from Mars and Venus, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He said, I acknowledge you guys. It's so hard to do the grind. And I realized that I've been doing it for 20 years. So I haven't had a job since 1997. Yeah. Um, and I'm proud. I feel proud of, of yeah. what it takes to create, continually right. create, continually put yourself. Continually generate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to dare. Yeah. Um, that's what it takes. All right. So you've been doing this for 20 years. And would you say that when you left your job, that was the beginning of you playing for real? I mean, let's talk about life as a game, I guess, and your experience. You know, when did, when did you realize that life is a game? And I bet a lot of people might think life's not a game. Life's serious. Yeah. Well, I, (laughs) I've definitely taken life very, very seriously. I mean, when I, when I was seven, I watched my five-year-old sister get killed in a, in a bus accident. It doesn't get much more serious. It doesn't get much more serious than that. Than that, no. So, you know, it's not that I, that I, I think life isn't real and that there aren't high stakes, yeah. but I've found that play is a value of mine. I think you would know that. You've known me for a long time. And yeah. even <laughs> I'm thinking now about Harbin Hot Springs 
and the inflatable duck story. Um, but I always try and bring lightness to any situation. That's part of my gift. Yes. And, and you're just going to leave it at that, the inflatable duck story. You're not going to tell people what, I don't even remember. I'm a little scared. Oh, you don't remember? Was I I've part got, of the inflatable duck story? I've got people. Well, <laughs> you might've been in the pool, but, um, I, I've met people that I've never met before and they go, Oh, you're the guy with the duck. Oh, no, I don't and, know the um, duck story. All right. I tell you this story because I think it illustrates the whole idea about not taking life too seriously so you can be in a flow state. A yeah. um, <clears throat> friend of ours uh, was processing something with another friend of ours and um, uh, I knew he didn't want to do it. I knew he did not want to sit down and have a processing conversation at Harbin Hot Springs. And I'm in the pool floating around with some people and having a great time. It's a clothing optional resort. So uh, I exercised my option to not wear clothes. And um, I could see an hour had gone by and they're still sitting up there by the table deep into process. Serious conversation. So I got out of the pool and at the time I happened to have this inflatable rubber duck around my waist. (laughs) And that was all I was wearing. And I got out of the pool and I just walked up to them, walked straight up to the table, these people being really serious. And they looked up and I stood there dripping wet in all my glory. And I said, I just want to make sure that you're taking this seriously enough. (laughs) And they cracked up and then dissolved the whole thing and everything was fine. I could imagine that you could dissolve things like that and that you may have been smacked at times. Like, like, I don't know if actually physically smacked, but you know, I could imagine that that could actually um, upset people and release people, you know? Oh yeah. It's a risk. Yeah. It's a risk. Um, but, you know, a friend of ours, Brian Bear, once described me to someone, he introduced me to someone and said, this guy is playful and deep. Mm. And that really resonated with me. I'm like, I love that. And Play For Real, my whole brand is about yeah. being playful, yet playing for real. For real, right? It's not just play. <laughs> There's no. a, there's a real or there's a depth to it. Yeah. So yeah. I say, let's, let's, let's laugh even in the face of like, like another, another friend of ours was dying. He was dying. And I was the one person that wouldn't be serious with him or sad with him or buy into the story. And I would joke with him. Uh-huh. Um, even, even when his mother was dying and we went and she's there in the hospital and she can't talk, we were laughing. Mm-hmm. And I think we want that, but that doesn't mean I mean being frivolous and not caring about anything. Yes. Let's play. Let's play full out with lots of truth, lots of daring and caring. Uh-huh. Um, and that lets us play, but also for real so that we can have real connection. Mm, right. I was just getting that as you said that you get to create real connection you know, if you're, if you're, I can see the play part, but there's also the real part. Like if you're, you're willing to engage in everything from play to truth, you know, and you're willing to dare to be close or dare to risk losing a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And I could see, you tell me, I could see the connection between that and living a regret-free life. Mm. Well, it was Tony Robbins who, who pointed out that, uh, that if someone's afraid of something, because we're afraid of so many things, yeah. and that's fine. That's fine. We're afraid to get rejected. We're afraid to get up on stage. We're afraid to start that new business. We're afraid to call that client and ask for a sale. We're afraid to ask that partner, at, that, that person out at a bar. Yeah. We're afraid. We're just afraid. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, but he said one way to get past that is to find something that people are more afraid of. And he said one motivator, and this motivates me all the time is fear of regret. Mm. So the way I measure some decisions, like, um, for example, a friend of mine tried to commit suicide about, um, We've talked about a lot of dying in this. I know. This so far. But this is to, real, right? There's, yeah, it's not just right. playing. A friend of mine tried to take his life twice, uh, mm. a bit over a year ago, mm. and I've just lost my thread. <laughs> I just don't. Well, we, I mean, that's a pretty serious, it's, it, it's interesting. I'm like, oh, oh, not surprised, right? Right, right. So he tried to take his life, and I, 
I was, I was really scared to take some actions. I was scared to call his dad. Yeah. Um, because he didn't have a good relationship with his dad and I thought he might be pissed off. Yeah. I was afraid to call his sister who he hadn't talked to for six years. I was afraid to do a lot of things, but the way I measured it was, could I regret not doing those things? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Am I going to regret more not doing them or doing them? And I realized if he killed himself yeah. and I had not done everything I could, I would regret that until yes. the day I died. So I think that's a great measure for any you're considering on my deathbed, am I going to go, whew, glad I didn't ask that person out or ask right. for that sale? Or am I going to go, you did that? Yeah. Did no, that. it's really you powerful. It. I, I often have my clients look back from the end of their life and think, right, what do I really want? What's really important to me? And I'm curious if you have any suggestions or tips for, it's one thing to think about, will I regret this later? and get a yes or no. Okay. Yes, I will regret it. So I'm going to go do it. Then it's another thing to actually go do it. Now you have, I'll call them the balls or the cojones to walk up to someone naked in a duck blow up, a blow up duck, right? right? Some people, and I relate, feel a little more hesitant or a little more shy or how do you help people get from the idea to the action? I just, I'm feeling a little nervous right now. I can feel something in, in my body because when you, when you said I have the cojones to walk up with someone in a duck, yeah, that was easy for me. Huh. But don't, don't be misled or deceived and think that I don't face massive edges for me. Now, maybe my edges are pushed further back, but I uh, find the edges. So, you still find them. You won't, oh, you won't just settle. Oh, my God. Yeah, stepping off a mountain in the Himalayas and going up. Um, scared the and I'm talking flying solo. I'm not saying there's someone with me flying the thing. No, you're, I'm you're flying, flying this thing. Airplane? No, this was a paraglider. A paraglider. I went up to 10,000 feet and I had partial collapses of my wing. I had 50% collapses. So don't think I don't have edges. They're just further back, but I yeah. find them. Yeah. I, once, I once called someone to apologize for something I'd done when I was younger that mm. could, have, could have sent me to jail. Wow. And that that person could have could have uh, sent me to jail wow. because they didn't know that I'd done anything wrong and I called and admitted to something and I was risking prison. That was terrifying. Like I was shaking making the call. Uh -huh. But your question is, how can you do it? Well, firstly, you don't have to start off with the biggest things. <laughs> Nothing that would send you to jail. Yes, that's a good no, idea. Start with something no. smaller. Yeah, find your edges. Um, something that's just just a little scary for you it might be with your partner sharing something that they they might get upset about mm -hmm. it might be admitting to someone that you broke a dish it might be calling um a friend and apologizing for for how you treated them in school yeah. i mean you know you could just pick something that's your age yes. well and even as you say that i think wow it's so interesting because a lot of the men i work with are not scared to go heli skiing or whitewater rafting, but saying to their partner or to someone on a date, I really care about you, or this thing isn't working for me, or I have a desire that hasn't been met, or this is something yes. I want. Those are the terrifying things for a lot oh, of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what are they going to say? What's going to happen? Yeah, um, am I going to lose I, them? Yeah, I got a friend who's got borderline personality disorder and I didn't know what that was but I have more of a sense now and um you know if I say something to her she could blow up like there's big stakes yeah but find your edge and you asked how do people do it so one 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 thing you can do is just find something big enough to be edgy for you yeah and then and small enough that it's not not too scary and practice the muscle i've been mm -hmm. doing this for, for 20 years leaning into my edges my psychiatrist calls me counterphobic um i didn't know what that was but now i do uh you exercise the muscle and you can build up to bigger and bigger things yes but there's a second thing which we talked about a little before we started recording which is you can reframe it uh -huh. i think we're walking around thinking that i would make do that scary thing for a result. Yes. I would do it so that uh, I'm closer with my partner. I would do that so that um, I get a sale. I would do, I was at a conference last year and I, I pitched Jack Canfield and writing a book together. That was edgy for me. 
Yeah. I bet. Right. Yeah. Um, I asked a, a woman I just met if she wanted to go to Colombia with me. That was edgy for me. Right. But what I found, this is my revelation after the, the retreat is I realized I did four really edgy things and I felt great about the fact that I'd done that them. You did them. The results, I didn't mind if I got no's for all of them. I realized the true win is full self-expression so that I can die without regret. Yeah, right. And I think about, right, full self-expression and full aliveness. Man Alive is the name of this podcast, right? And, right. and whether, you know, you and I have had this conversation too. It's like part of the, the um, desire to start this podcast was to support men who you know, to support the larger culture, what does it take to have fewer men committing suicide? And then another part of it is, you know, there are a lot of men who wouldn't consider committing suicide, but feel like a part of them is dying inside. And you have a very strong answer, right, to that feeling of, I'm not feeling alive, everything on paper looks good, I've got the house, the family, the job, the whatever, but you know, somewhere along the way, I lost my zest for life. Yes, I do believe that we must be fully expressed or it will kill us slowly. Mm. Okay, now fully expressed, can you describe, what do you actually mean by that? It means when you have a desire, you don't shut it down. Uh -huh. You find a way um, to express it or to ask for it. It means when you have something you really want to say, you've always wanted to play piano, but you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to go and do that. You must give yourself those gifts. Yeah. Imagine you're, you're a mother. Um, I'm not a parent, but if uh, parents out there, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you're not just imagine you're a parent, you've got a child, you want that child to be expressed. You want that child to be free. You want that child to go for what they want and to speak up and say, hey, that doesn't that doesn't work for me. Can we do it this way? Uh -huh. Full self-expression. I didn't know what it meant until I did landmark education. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell is that? Right. Oh, Cause what? it sounds a little floofy when you yeah. say expression like, Bleh. yeah, they told, they told me if you do this course, you will be fully expressed in every aspect of your life. And if you're not, it will be an integrity issue for you. Mm -hmm. What the F is that? Right. What does that mean? No idea. But once you have it, once you get fully expressed, and uh, it's true now, if there's something that's off for me, like say, say, a when friend, you're not expressed, yeah, like say I was at a, a restaurant and a friend's being being nasty to the to the waiter, right? That yeah. doesn't tend to happen, but if that happened, yeah, um, if I don't say something, yes, I feel off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something feels off in, in my body, and again, this is a muscle you practice. It just like speaking up and saying, "Hey, what do you?" What do you say about cutting cutting the 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 guy or the girl a break? Right. Or, or I felt I felt I contracted when you just said that to that guy. I just want to speak it. You know that felt kind of weird. Um, I've got a friend that just just told me today. Uh, how do I how do I be expressed with my my friend because she's so angry, so angry about this guy, and I don't agree with her. I don't want to buy into her story. So we're talking about how can you just be self-expressed? The result isn't as important. It's just yeah. what's right, what's your truth? Yeah. Well, and it reminds me too, I mean, A, I'm hearing there's, there's a boldness in what you're saying and there's daring, right? There's a lot of daring. A lot to, of daring. And, and risking. I mean, I often think you can't really fully be in a romantic relationship unless you're, you're willing to risk letting it go because otherwise we can start to hide and do these little things and lose ourselves in certain ways. And this might just be, you know, my personality, but it's often what I, what I see with clients too. The, the passion fades and the connection fades if we're not actually willing to risk saying that thing that, whoa, like you said, it could make that person upset or it could, it could even end our relationship. Usually it brings more of a closeness when you do it artfully, right? And there's something right. too when you said, you know, full self-expression is not, or when you're talking about a kid, I do want my son to be able to say, hey, this doesn't work for me and I want something different. What I don't want him to say is, I can't stand it, blah, 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 and throw a temper tantrum, right? Right. So I think as adults, we're also learning to take those, that full self-expression and do it in a really artful way. Yeah. Well, I, I would say that comes second. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Whenever right. I have to make some messes along the way. Yeah. Yeah, when I coach clients around boundaries, yeah. um, they're going to mess it up in the beginning. 
Yeah. But the but the daring is to be willing to try it and maybe maybe screw it up. I coached a client on saying to his partner, "Hey, it's not okay with me that you speak that way to me. Mm-hmm. You speak with some kindness now." Yes. Boy, did that not work um, the first time around. The first time, right, or in that moment. Yeah, did not work, and man, she shut him down, and uh, and. Uh, you know, it was like, you did that the wrong way. And that wasn't very kind how you said that and whatever. And he's like, well, I'm going to get it wrong for a while. Yes. I'm going to get it wrong for a while and I'll get better at it. And I said, that's how it works. I you love it. it. And that level of self-respect to be able to say, yeah, I hear you cutting me down again. And I'm going to respect myself enough by saying, it's okay, if I get this wrong, it's okay. If I make a mess, I'm going to, I'm going to do the best I can. Yeah. Yeah. So when, so one, you, you want to work out your truth and that really takes some time and attention and some noticing. And then two, it takes some daring to share that truth. And then what you're bringing in here, I think is the third pillar of play for real, which is caring. Uh Yeah. Be as, be as caring as you can for yourself, for your partner, for your business. You have to nurture these things while you're being, the warrior or the, mm-hmm. is warriessa a word? We can make it one. Yeah, or the warriors. The warriessa. Warriessa. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, while you're doing that, uh, yeah, truth, daring, and then caring uh, is the third pillar. Mm-hmm. Truth, daring, and caring. And any thoughts on caring that you can share about how can we care better? How can we be, you know, more caring, more loving? Yeah, well... Without giving ourselves up, right? Right. Without losing ourselves or, or well, not having boundaries. Well, I think what you're speaking to is that you also want to care for yourself. Mm-hmm. So you, you couldn't give yourself up because you have to care for yourself. Um, I don't know if I have an answer to that. I think an answer is probably going to come. But what came to me was, was a little bit more about the why it's so critical. Uh-huh. Great. I've been such a spiritual warrior since I started my first course. I've been like leaning into stuff. I've, um, I've explored open relationships and I'm afraid of abandonment. Mm -hmm. I've gone and flown paragliders and I'm afraid of, of heights. I tend to lean into my fears because I don't want them to have power over me. Yeah. But I found my limit. I didn't know there was a limit. Okay. I didn't know there was a limit. So I did a year. Um, I've had uh, depression and anxiety. It, it may be chronic. I don't know. I'm still mm. open to a complete solution and I'm yeah. eating well and exercising and doing all the things that you do. Well, and before you go on, I just want to thank you for being vulnerable and honest, right? And, you know, that's one of the things I'm really loving and appreciating about you is, okay, and I don't need to hide anything. I can actually be out and in the open with it. Thank you. I felt my body relax as you said that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I had anxiety and depression and I was like, I'm going to conquer this. I'm a spiritual warrior. So I went a year with no medication. I'm like, I'm just, no matter what happens, no medication so I can pop and just heal spiritually. And boy, I I had a doctor friend begging me to take even short-term medication to get my chemistry back in balance. Yeah. Oh, you don't get it, man. My friends don't do that. We're spiritual. Uh It's not, it's not the way I've got to find I've got to go to the end of the line and I'm going to pop. I'm going to be good. Yeah. No, I got so bad after two, maybe six weeks of, of not sleeping and adrenaline wow. shooting through my body at night as I lay in bed. And Aww. finally, finally I was like, wow. And I crashed and went into deep depression and I yeah. realized that I have limits. Yeah. And I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, mind of man. Right. No, it's a powerful discovery. And I feel like, you know, there are, uh, we've circled in the same realms and transformation and spirituality. And in certain ways, um, I think my beliefs have mellowed over the years as I integrate, you know, more psychological knowledge and more knowledge from, I don't know, hospice and more just from all different places. And that recognition that we can we can try and think I am going to muscle this or I myself yes. I'm in control here and I'm going to make this happen. And then yes. your experience seems like this rec- this reminder, like, 
okay, not necessarily, right? Yeah. You can take control of what you can take control of. And then there are other things happening as we're human beings in these bodies and souls. And we have, we have limits. So you need to work out where you are in your cycle or in your life. Yes. Some people are doing loads of caring. They're just, you know, in the same patterns and they, they, they could really use risking more and yes. daring more because they've got plenty of base, you know, foundation. Yeah. Um, or there might be areas of your life where everything's cared for, but some area like my, your business, for example. Oh, I love this. Could really go for it. Yeah. Other people might have the syndrome I had, like Lone Ranger syndrome, and right. I can do so everything. I have no limits. Mm -hmm. You need to take a look at um, it's just practical. It's common sense. If you don't care for your body, yeah. it may bitch slap you the way mine did. Yeah. It, it's just probably going to happen. If you don't care for your relationship, you are going to have to pay. Yeah. Guaranteed. You're going to pay. If you don't care for your business and handle the taxes and the systems and be nice to your employees and be nice to your customers, it's, you know, not just going for new ones, the business, you will pay. So I'm doing, I'm a practical guy. I'm not saying this from no, a spiritual this is great. I love point of view. Practicality and the balance. Yes, you've got to work out. Am I? Do I need more daring right now? Yeah. Or do I need more caring right now? Yeah. And then you asked, how do you do that? Well, take take stock. How's your nutrition? Mm -hmm. How's your nutrition? Are you eating processed food with 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 with? I think ninety. I'm going to make this up. I'm making this up. 95% of processed food has sugar added. I just made that up. <laughs> okay. I want someone to challenge me. I'm to respond that. to something that you just made up. But Oh, hey, you, did you know? Because I've been reading ingredients on stuff. I'm yeah. doing, doing a course right now. And I'm, I'm reading looking for 60 different forms of sugar. I'm not kidding. I've yeah, got a no, list it's of pretty, it's different pretty gross. forms. Did you know there's sugar in bacon? Yes. Did, did you know there's sugar in salt? No. That Don't one. That. Well, and here's the interesting part too. I mean, you know, I've, I've just gone through a, um, some really hard health stuff. And I will say, this is where I really get everybody needs to look at their own body and system, right? I did a cleanse and it was supposed to be the thing. All the foods that are supposed to heal everybody's bodies are the ones that actually make my body go to hell. So I just want to bring it back to also like the, the balance piece that you're saying, you know, if you are in certain areas of your life, you're feeling more deadened, it's probably more daring or it even could be more caring because maybe there's more connection. Um, and it might be certain phases of your life. I was thinking about being a parent right now, right? There's a phase of my life where I can't care as well for other people in my life as I did before I had a child but it might be rethinking, okay, what, what ways can I care now? Or how can I be more daring as a parent? So I'm really, there's something about that piece that feels um, relieving and really helpful that people can look at these areas and phases of their lives. Yeah, exactly. And we, we often know what it would take to be more caring for ourselves. We often know that it would take maybe a little bath time every now and then or a massage or getting outside and away from the computer yeah. or adjusting the nutrition simply or exercise. We, we know what it's going to take. And um, yeah. I love what you said. It's, it's true. We want to work out when to do each. I just, I just coached this. I love this client. He's, he's, he's in Costa Rica. His business is making a hundred thousand a month. Now he's, he's just had a fourth child um, he's teaching ninjutsu to the local villages. Mm -hmm. like he's just got everything going for him. And he's like, I think I want to buy this million dollar company. Can we talk it through? And by the end of the session, I was like, dude, too much daring. Mm. You have so much on your plate. You yeah. could do better at the business you already have. Yeah. Rather you than could, you can be a father you can um, take, you do more meditation, yep. like get an assistant yes. so that things are off your plate. Like we're looking at foundationals, too much daring. Yeah. Let's look at the caring and instead of taking on this massive. Mm, good, good. All right. Well, as we're starting to wrap up, I'm curious. Already. What? I know it always goes so fast. 
What do you want men to know who are listening? What would you feel like? Oh, if I didn't end, if I, if I got off of this episode and I didn't say it, I would regret it. You're covered. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be reincarnated. That's my truth. I don't know. Yeah. I might, I might not, but what if I'm not going to get another life? Mm -hmm. I mean, what if this is the only one? And I think I've been living and most of us live as if we're probably going to get a do over. So ask the question, if this is the last life I'm going to have, and if I only have 10, 20, 30, 40 more years, or even like six months, yeah. what am I going to change so that when the time comes, I can say, I gave it everything. I really milked it. Yes. That's what I want for me. And that's what I want for everyone else. Just that you're living the way you would really live as if this is the last one that you get. And I think, I mean, I talk about truth, daring, and caring. Those are, that's a great framework. But at the end of the day, look, let's make more money. I'm all over that. Let's do that. But if you do that without deepening your connections with uh -huh. your kids, mm -hmm. with your family, with your um, customers, with your friends, and with yourself, yeah. you are missing out. And I don't want that for you. I don't want you to miss out. I don't want you to be in your deathbed like, like I imagine ninety percent of people and say, "Yeah, I wish I, I wish I just gone for it more. Yeah. I wish I'd be more self-expressed. Yeah. I wish I'd be more." I wish I'd taken better care of my kids. I wish, I wish I'd, I'd taken better care of that. My yeah, I wish my kid didn't see the back of my laptop all the time. I yeah. want you to think that way. Yeah, that's what I want for you. Think that way, awesome. so that you're playing. For real. Mm, thank you. And where can people find more of you? You can take the one minute reality check. Just take, you know, see if you're playing for real at playforreal.life. Nice. That's life with an F for freedom. And uh, life with an F? F for well. freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Some people think it's with a L I V E. Oh, I just thought, when does life not have an F in it? <laughs> right. Okay. Say it again. What's the play, URL? Playforreal.life. Okay. Um, and if you see a gap between uh, where you are and where you want to be, then request a session with me. Okay. I, don't, I can't do it for everybody, but I can do it for a lot of people that ask. And I don't charge for these sessions. I love creating plans for people. And then if you want to implement it on your own, just keep me posted and tell me how it went. Mm -hmm. And if you want help implementing it, then we can talk about coaching. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for being here today. And thank you for being such an example of being bold and being loving and being honest, right? It's, I can hear the truth, daring and caring. They really do feel like you, I see you living them. So thank you for being such an example. Thank you. And bold and loving is it? I like playful and, and deep and bold and loving is another. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, and thank you for the work you're doing for men. Hmm. I, I, I have the sense that you go into some really deep, dark areas and you want to help, help men who, uh, particularly who've been struggling with some of the, the yeah. darkness. And we didn't, we didn't really get to talk much about that. So I mean, we can talk about it another time. Yeah, I, we can talk about it another time. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you for helping people who've really gone to the edges and, and maybe at the edges right now of despair. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting actually, just a quick response to that to say, you know, I was working with a client today who is in this major life transition. I would call it, you know, out there in the, um, the normal world, <laughs> someone might call it a midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. And yet what I'm seeing is, Oh, there's this kind of midlife awakening that happens when you're willing to call all of your values into question and, you know, become, who you want to be in the second half of your life and face some of those darker places from when you were younger. So yeah, it's a it. shame that things, I think it's a shame that things have to get so crappy yeah. and so desperate sometimes for the Phoenix to rise from the ashes. But hey, that's, yeah. that's sometimes. Funny. And then sometimes it's just that little niggling, right. Of like, something's not feeling right, or I'm not getting what I want in relationship, whatever it is, it's different for everyone, but yeah, yeah it's beautiful work. So thank you. 
I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope it gives you a sense of what's possible and how good your life can be. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe to Man Alive and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, videos, and raw footage I only share there. These are some of the most interesting parts of these expert conversations. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power to accelerate your career and solidify your confidence with women because the two are related and I know you don't have to settle for one or the other. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.